You doing good? Awesome. Um, this morning we celebrated Pastor Anthony and Rebecca as they transition um, uh, 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 on to their new journey. And so uh, I guess they're going to be planning on, on moving. They're getting ready to kind of sell their house. And um, uh, if, if you haven't heard kind of that story of the, of the transition, you can go and listen to um, uh, uh, kind of the story of that on- online, SarahValleCenter.com. It's also on Facebook and everything else. I'm super happy for them, super sad for me. Uh, Anthony's one of my best friends. And... Um, and now I don't have any more friends. No, I'm just, yeah, you, you know, you're my friends. You're my friends. Pastor Frank, you're, you're my friend. Guys, Pastor Frank's here from Teen Challenge, right? And he's, he's my homeboy. He's my friend. And, um, you know, and uh, man, God's doing some really cool, really cool stuff. And it involves transition, you know. Um, and and we, we've, got, we've got to have um, the ability to see the grace, not just on our lives. We have to have the ability to see the grace on each other. So that when it comes time for, for other people to transition where God's calling them, that we're, that, that we're not mourning that, but we're celebrating God's grace in that transition. In fact, um, I believe that one of the most precious things that we can sow in life isn't necessarily our finances, okay? But it's, um, it's, it's friends, it's, it's family, it's, it's coming alongside of people and saying, yes, I bless you and I want to be a part of your planting because I know that if I can be a part of your planting, I'll be a part of your harvest, Amen. And so uh, we're so happy for Rebecca and Anthony. We're so happy about what the Lord is doing um, in, their, in, their, in, their, in their lives. Um, now, if you've got your Bibles, why don't you turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about um, uh, uh, supernatural gifts. And this is going to be fun um, because we're going to do something special at the end that there just wasn't time to do um, in the morning services. So we're going to do something kind of cool tonight. And, um, uh, and I'll, I'll explain that here in a second. As you go into 1 Corinthians chapter 12, um, uh, I'll, I'll catch you up real quick. Not sure if you heard, um, but I had the opportunity to be interviewed this last week um, from a journalist with um, uh, NPR. And that was, um, uh, uh, turned out to be um, far more intense. You know, you're always kind of prepared for the good, the bad, you know, and, and, and the ugly, right? You kind of hope for the best. I, I, I'm a millennial, so I tend to run a little more on the optimistic side of things, you know. But like before the thing even started, I knew that it was, it was about to get it was about to get real, you know, in the, in the actual interview conversation. In fact, before we even, um, actually, it was part, one of the very first questions. And this is how I knew this was going to be, like, this, is, this was going to be kind of an intense interview, was because the very first thing that she said is, so you guys like to touch each other. You like to touch people. And, and, and I was like, what? you know, I, I, wouldn't, put it, I put it, wouldn't put it that way. But, but, you know, and she was like, no, like, you guys are really big into touching each other in order to release healing and to cast out demons. I was like, uh-oh, she's done her homework, right? You know, and she said, yeah, I've, I've watched your services. Uh, I've, even, uh, oh, I've even checked out a couple passages in 1 Corinthians. Uh, uh, she's definitely done her homework, right? Because like we're, we're in 1 Corinthians and, uh, you know, okay, all right, you know. So I, I said, yeah, okay, so touching each other or what we call the doctrine of the laying on of hands is spiritual. It's also practical because we've got this thing called the five love languages. And one of those five love languages is something called physical touch. So even though we've been told this last, this last year to, to stay home and stay safe and don't trust anyone and don't come into any sort of contact with, with, with anyone, we know that one of the ways that we receive love and give love Love is through physical touch. And so, yes, at Sarah Vile Center, we're a very physical, <laughs> good, awesome, yeah, yeah. It, 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 so we're a very physical um, church, okay? And, um, uh, and we do believe in the laying on of hands for physical healing and, the, and, and for deliverance, as you said, from the deliverance of, of demons. Um, uh, and guess what? It says, in, um, and I'll read this to you, in Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Therefore, I remind you to stir up, okay? That, mean, that means to stir up, like to stir up a fire, okay? To stir up the gifts of God, which is in you, by what? By the laying on of hands. This is the doctrine of the laying on of hands. So we're not just physical to be physical. And I explained to her, there is a 
natural, normal part, the physical gift of the laying on it, but there's also a mystical dimension of the laying on of hands. We see this, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. So tonight we're going to be looking at spiritual gifts, and then at the end, um, we're going to stir up spiritual gifts in this room with the, with the laying on of hands. And when we're done, we're going to invite you, if, if it's your desire to have spiritual gifts um, stirred up inside of you, if it's your desire maybe even to be filled with the Holy Spirit tonight, maybe even with the evidence of speaking in tongues, which we will be studying tonight, we're not just going to study something, but we're going to activate something um, in this room. Holy Spirit is here in this room. And so uh, now pastors and elders and various ones from our ministry team, we will lay hands on you and the gift of God will be stirred up inside of you and you will leave this, ch- this place different than the way that you came. Everyone say amen. Every time we come to church, every time we're together, every time we're in the presence of the Lord, we should leave different than the way that we came, right? We should leave better than the way that we came, yeah? All right, awesome. So tonight we're going to be talking about um, supernatural gifts. And Paul is writing um, to the Corinthians, and he says here, now concerning spiritual gifts, concerning supernatural realities, concerning uh, superpowers, concerning gracious endowments that lead to miraculous realities, I would plead with you to not be ignorant. Don't be uninformed. You know that once when you were pagans, okay, so in your old days when you were pagan, how many of you, they say that about your past. You remember when you were a pagan? How many ex- how many ex pagans we got here tonight? Okay, <laughs> not exactly a term we necessarily, you know, I, you know I, okay, I won't ask any more questions, but you know, th- back when you were pagans, okay, you were led astray to mute idols, however, you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is a curse. So if they're walking in the true Spirit, okay, their Spirit's going to be in harmony with the message of Jesus. They would never put down the message or the authority, the supremacy of Christ Jesus if they're walking in the true spirit. And then he says, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except through the Holy Spirit. So here's what he's saying. Hey, church, church in America. Hey, Seattle Revival Center. Um, We need to talk about supernatural realities. We need to talk about the gifts of the spirit. We need to talk about the, the spirit realm. But when we talk about these things, we have to do it through the lenses of Jesus because Jesus is our shepherd. He is our access point. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father is is through the sun. And the reason why this is so important is because we live in Seattle. We live in a region where spiritual things are very hip. We live in a city where spiritual things are always trending. Okay. But in our city, the majority of people that access spiritual things did not do it through Jesus. Now, the problem is, is that when you access supernatural realms through a different shepherd, through a counterfeit shepherd, then you go into a real realm, but through a counterfeit portal, which means that you cannot trust what you're seeing. You cannot trust what you're hearing because you're not accessing it through the spirit of truth. So everything that you're engaging with, it can be presented as truth, but oftentimes anything that is is that you're seeing or engaging in the spirit realm outside of Christ, it is manipulative and it is exploitive. And so for this reason, it is so important that we do not neglect supernatural spiritual realities because they're scary and that's what New Agers do. But we say there is a true and perfect spiritual realm and we engage that through our true and spiritual and perfect shepherd, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. When it comes to supernatural realities, we're always listening, paying attention to the name. Okay, I hear you saying a lot of cool stuff. I hear you saying a lot of spiritual stuff. I see you doing things. I see you, I see you with all your woo-woo, but I don't hear you talking about Jesus. Where's Jesus in this? If there's no Jesus in it, 
Sorry, I don't want it. Listen, if there's no Jesus in it, you don't want it. Why? Because no matter how attractive it is on the outside, it's trash. If Jesus ain't in it, it's trash. Why? Because every good and perfect gift, if it's got any sort of value, Jesus is in it. Doesn't mean you can purchase it from a Christian bookstore. Okay? Doesn't mean that it has to be Christian per se. But if there's truth in it, that truth is Jesus and it can point to Jesus. Okay, okay. All right, let's keep reading, all right? You guys, you guys need to stay focused. Verse, we got 31 verses to read, okay? We can't just be pausing whenever we see something interesting. All right, here we go. Uh, verse four. Now there are a variety of gifts. Everyone say variety. variety. How many of you like variety? How many of you prefer to have something different to eat each night of the week? You know, beans again, right? Like, so, it, it, yeah, so there's a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. There's a variety of services, but the same Lord. There's a variety of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Look at the person next to you and say, there's a manifestation of glory in you. It exists for the common good. If there's no one sitting next to you, then, then move. Find someone interesting and introduce yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to move, but if you want to, you can. <laughs> friends, don't let friends sit at church alone. Okay, yeah. And, and, and each person here and in each person online, hello, online people. I'm glad you're watching. All right, for everybody that's engaging with this service, there is a unique manifestation of God and glory that is, exists inside of you, and it exists for the common good, right? And here's what that means, that the glory of God inside of me should make SRC a better reality, and the glory of God within you should make SRC your family, your marriage, your city, and your nation better. You mean to say, Pastor Darren, that the United States of America is better because of the glory of God that's inside of me here in the Pacific Northwest? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. What you going to do with all that glory? What you going to do with all that glory, all that glory, all, you know, because here, here's, here's, when you got all that glory all, all, all up inside, you can't just trap it to this, here, here I'll tell you, how many of you worship tonight, um, Richard and Jans Perry, come on, uh, 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 but here's the thing, that you can't, like what we did tonight, it wasn't contained to this room. That when we worship Jesus tonight, it wasn't contained to the Pacific Northwest, that when we worship God in spirit and in truth, we ascend and we leave this time. It's, it's called worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. That we don't just worship God in this time and space, but when we worship God, we ascend and we trust, we transcend this time and space. We are caught up in the spirit. Sometimes by faith, you don't actually have to see these things. Sometimes it's by faith. It's, Thank you, Father, as I worship you in spirit and in truth. I am joining in with the company of angels, with the angelic, because the glory of God inside of me changes the reality. It changes the atmosphere in this region and cities and nations because I'm engaging with the glory of God that is not even contained by a generation. It's a multi-generational move of his presence that he oversees not just cities and nations. He oversees generations that he is the God above time and that when I ascend and I am seated with Jesus in heavenly places I am worshiping him above time and I am worshiping him in a place where my voice can begin to permeate even the Azusa Street outpouring my voice can begin to permeate even moves of God that I might not be on earth to see look at the person next to you say there's a manifestation of glory inside of you and it's for the common good. Okay, verse eight. 
For the one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. How many of you, that's your desire? You just want to utter wisdom. Like, that's my desire, is that I would be so, I would be engaging with the Spirit of wisdom so much so, right? I'm so full of spiritual wisdom that I burp wisdom bubbles. <laughs> How many of you have ever watched the old cartoons? You know, the, I, I can't believe the stuff they used to do in old cartoons. But in old cartoons, man, the little mouse was always finding the hooch and always getting drunk. You know, you know you're like, this is for kids. You got a mouse that's just like, <laughs> you know, and there's like bubbles going everywhere. Well, that, <laughs> you know, you know, do not be drunk on wine for that is in excess, but be very, very filled and intoxicated with the Holy Ghost, right? There is this place where you begin to engage a spirit of wisdom and that spirit of wisdom begins to intoxicate you where all of a sudden your natural thoughts that you think that are so high and intelligent, all of a sudden they begin to bow to the mind of Christ. It's like Paul said, he's like, whoa, I've got the mind of Christ. There is this place. You're so full of wisdom, you burp wisdom bu bubbles. It just comes out. <laughs> Oops, did I say that? <laughs> Now, wisdom isn't necessarily mathematical. Wisdom doesn't necessarily make earthly sense. But wisdom is wisdom. It is spiritual. It is important. And we need wisdom in the church. Every day, I pray this way. Father, give me wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor. But above all else, give me wisdom. And then Peter, my son, will say, and favor. <laughs> That's my boy. All right. He said, in the church, it is given some with the utterance of wisdom, okay? And to other, the utterance of knowledge. What's knowledge? How is that different from wisdom? Wisdom isn't necessarily mathematical, but knowledge is. It's not having the right answer, and all of a sudden, you've got the, the download. You just got the matrix that, whoa, I know kung fu. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. And obviously I don't. But hey, 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 it, that's what knowledge. Now, we've got a friend. He was here a couple, couple weeks ago, Richard Gordon. Um, he's, he's, an en, he's an engineer. And um, he was brought in by Google to solve a really big problem that he didn't have the answer for. And so th they, they needed outside help. And so Google's smarter than a lot of Christians. They needed help. So they called for help. Okay. All right, good. And so Richard, they hired Richard. And he came in. He met with their team. He had an entire week to solve the problem. On the first day in a couple of hours, he already solved the problem before lunch. How? The utterance of knowledge. It's infused knowledge. It's that place where you don't know what to do in the natural, and then the, the glory comes, and the glory gives you the download that you need. That you need. How many of you, you've ever, you, you, you knew what you were supposed to do, but you should have known what you're supposed to do? What is that? That is a spiritual gift. Brethren, don't be ignorant. This is what we need. The Lord's going to take us into really big problems that we do not have the solution for in and of ourselves. We're going to need the glory so that we can have glory stories. Amen? And to another faith by the same spirit. We're going to read even next week about this place. That there is a place of faith where you can speak to a mountain and move it. And to another, the gift of healing. I love it. I don't know if you were here last weekend, but we had uh, Alyssa and Lisa up here. And what we were doing, we were bragging on Jesus, you know. And Alyssa shared, hey, just a couple of weeks ago, not 20 years ago, just a couple of weeks ago. J uh, Alyssa, wave for, for our new friends here tonight. But, but you, uh, Alyssa had braces on all of her fingers, on all of her joints, and, and, all of her, and, 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 and just a couple of weeks ago, for the very first time in 18 years, she took off running. She took off the braces off her knees and, you know. And, <laughs> <laughs> two years oh I'm sorry even better yet for the first time in 22 years and she ran up this stage and she said Jesus healed me why because Jesus heals this is the working of miracles okay and to another prophecy yes we do not despise prophecy we believe in the prophets I I I, I so honor the prophets I love the prophets you know and um uh, uh, a, a friend of mine he, he is a prophet he reached out to me just this last week because he had an encounter with the Lord and in the encounter he saw something 
something happen in Seattle and he saw uh, uh, strings that are attached to different occultic entities within our city and he saw God break the strings and the control and the manipulation over Seattle, over this region. Even some of the symbolism that he gave me would speak of, I believe, uh, uh, monetary manipulation and even ma manipulation of currency um, uh, uh, with, with, uh, uh, because of evil and, uh, and occultic kinds of ties. And he said, there's going to be a natural shaking. There's going to be a natural, uh, 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 there's going to be an earthquake. And he said, it, it's not necessarily the big one. It's not necessarily uh, the major one. But this is what prophecy is. This is what prophets do. The Lord opens their eyes. He opens their senses. And he gives the prophet's direction, things that are to come, to come to the church. So we don't hear that so that we can freak out. We hear that so that we can pray, plan, and prepare, right? So like, like you don't necessarily need to go and drop $800 on big barrels of food off the dude off the TV, okay? But it might be smart to go get yourself um, some top ramen, okay? All right, just add, add water. You're good to go with that. You know, if you want some diversity, okay, maybe some macaroni and cheese, okay. You know, but it might not be a bad idea to, to plan a little. Listen, you're in Seattle. You live on a fault line. I scuba dive it. It was, a, it was a little bit freaky. Went down about 60 feet and saw a massive crack that goes right underneath the city of Seattle. Yay, good times. <laughs> So be, again, we don't freak out. We anoint our, our homes with oil. We anoint our, door, our do, doorposts with oil. We, we pray for the protection and the perseverance of, of our families here at SRC. But let's get ready. Why? There will be a shaking. It'll be a shaking in the natural. It's symbolic of what God's doing in the spirit, that he's breaking ties and strongholds over Seattle because there's a major move of God that's coming to our city. And to another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. This is called discernment. Guys, discernment is a big deal. We need this in the church. Why? The Holy Spirit is not the only spirit on the earth. In fact, the Holy Spirit isn't the only spirit operational in the church. We need to get the discernment so we can distinguish between spirits. Yeah, but they're so cool. Yeah, I know. But they do so many great things. Yeah, I know. What's the problem, Pastor Darren? You know a tree by its fruit. That don't smell like fruit. That smells like toot. It might be great, but if it smells like toot, don't eat it. Don't subscribe to it. Don't buy it. Okay? I'm glad we had that conversation. All right, and it continues here. Various kinds of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. What's tongues? What's that all about? Tongues is a big deal. Yeah, we do it here. You know? Okay, so we do. I proved it. I pro yeah, and what is that? The Bible says that he who speaks in tongues, his spirit communicates with God. When your spirit's communicating with God, what's your mind saying? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, stop it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why? Because your mind likes to know what's going on all the time. Your mind is like, I, no, 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 no. I need to know what's going on. I need to be able to uh, figure, no, no, stop it. Now here's the thing, you can speak in tongues, but you can also interpret tongues. Now here's the thing about the language of the Spirit, is that your spirit is in union with the Holy Spirit. What does union mean? One. My spirit is in union, what does that mean? That my spirit is inseparable from the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? It means that my spirit is smarter than my soul. It means that my spirit knows things that my soul doesn't know. There are things that my mind doesn't know that my spirit knows. So then how am I taught of the Lord? I engage in the spirit. Where Paul would say, thank God I speak in tongues when all y'all. 
That's what, he, that's what he said. Now, I got a friend, Pastor Greg, used to be associate pastor here along with Pastor Gail. And here's the thing. Greg lost something. I don't, I don't remember if it was his phone, his wallet, or his keys, okay? But it was an essential item. It's, you only have three essential items in your life, your phone, your wallet, your, or your keys, okay? And your, and your wife and children. But you don't lose them, except for when you do. And so it, he lost either his phone, his wallet, his key. I, I can't remember what it, what it was. And so he, this is what he said. He said, my spirit knows where it's at. My soul just forgot. This is a true story. Dear church, don't be ignorant of spiritual realities. Don't be ignorant of spiritual gifts. This is what the Lord has given to us. Supernatural technology to remember where you put your keys. I need, I don't know about you, I need practical technology like phones and iPads. I also need spiritual technology. How about you? So what does is, what is Greg begin doing? Shovel all the key to yabba, all the key to yada, poof, all the key to yama, da, da, you know, he begins not doing that. He, he does his own thing. He doesn't beatbox when he raps. I do because it's far more effective. But he, he was speaking in tongues. And then what did he do? He said, I began interpreting my tongues. And when he began to interpret his tongue, the interpretation was where he put whatever he had lost. Dear church, don't be ignorant of supernatural spiritual gifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says here, verse 11, all these are empowered, everyone say empowered, by one spirit, the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. Now when I say one, I want you guys to shout one. Let's practice. One. one. You guys are so good. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. For just as the body is one. Okay, let's, try it. let's try it again. I know, we're not used to this. We, we've been on Zoom church for a year, right? All right, here, here we go. <laughs> for just as the body is one, one, and as many members, and all members of the body, though many, are one, one. body, so it is with Christ. For in one, one. spirit we were all baptized, and into one, one. body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one Wine. spirit. Do you see that? Lots of people, lots of things, one God, one spirit, one thing. Yeah, this is a big deal. Very important um, principle number within the kingdom. For the body does not consist of one Wine. member, but of many. This is what Paul says. But the body doesn't consist of just one body part, but of many different body parts. Now, this is funny, because this is where Paul thinks that he's like a stand-up comedian. And he's going to start up with this metaphor. And I think that when Paul did this, I think he, was, I think he thought he was pretty funny. So if you just want to break out laughing, you can, because Paul, sometimes he gets kind of silly. This is what he says, verse 15. Now, if a foot should say... <laughs> What? A foot doesn't say. A foot doesn't out of mouth. Paul, you are silly. Okay, that's what he said. Just go along with it. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if an ear should say... <laughs> What? Silly Paul, ears don't talk. Anyways, all right. If an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. Now, if the, you're going to have to go along with this one. This is really going to trip you out. If the whole body were an eye, <laughs> <laughs> that there is freaky. He says, if the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? And if the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet... One, 
body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think are less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, that there would be no division in the body. Read it again. That there would be no division in the body. No division in my body. No division in my own DNA. No division in our marriage. No division with our children. No division in our home, in our city, in our church, in our nation. Division is unacceptable. Division is the fruit of dishonor, which is the frequency in the government of hell. You say, Pastor Darren, I got sexual sin in my life. Praise God. Repent. Let's work it. Let's work on it. We've seen countless people restored from sexual sin. Pastor Darren, I haven't been honest with my finances. I've been, I've been doing things. I got all these shell companies. I've been laundering millions of dollars. Well, that's a big deal, and you're probably going to jail, but God's going to redeem you, right? God can save you. I've got a lot of faith for you. Let's get you out of the mafia and into the body of Christ. I got a lot of faith for you. But here's the deal. If, if, if you are in the church and you say you are of Jesus and you are using your mouth and your authority to be divisive, to stir up division, to be subversive in the body of Christ, no, you are not a Christian. You are a witch. And you need to repent and get saved. Why? Because Christians do not divide the church. Christians unify the church. At SRC, oh, I messed up. I sinned. Okay, awesome. Let's work on it. But hey, SRC, you're talking smack on leadership. You're being divisive. You're being manipulative. You're doing all these things. You get one strike and then honey, you out. Why? Because I've seen witches destroy churches. So I, they're, they're, but they were so prophetic. Ah, accuracy doesn't make you legit. I've seen a lot of accurate demons. And I've seen a lot of inaccurate, true Christian, amazing people. <laughs> Accuracy doesn't turn me on. I, I prefer you to be accurate. I'm concerned about your heart. Are you a healed person bringing healing or are you a hurting, wounded person hurting and wounding Christians and churches? Say it again, Darren. Verse 25, that there would be no diversion in the body. What do you call rebellious cells? Cancer. What does cancer do? It causes the body to kill itself. It's time for cancer to be eradicated in the body of Christ. What is cancer? It's a spirit of rebellion in the body of Christ to get the body to kill itself. What do you do with cancer? You bring radiation. What's the radiation? It's the light that shines from the face of the king. <laughs> right. But that the members, we have the same care for one another. Now, if one member suffer, all suffer together. But if one member is honored, all rejoice together. Verse 27. Now, you are the body of Christ, individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church. And we say, first apostles, second prophets. So we see the church is established through the apostles and the prophets. Now, an apostle is interesting because an apostle isn't necessarily a pastor. Sometimes they start off as pastors, but all of a sudden something happens. What happens? Promotion of insight and perspective. What happens when, when, when there's a call of an apostle? There's a level of elevation that makes them difficult to connect to. You talk to an apostle and you're like, what are you even talking about? Come down here where the rest of us are. 
Yeah. Why? Because an apostle is usually living in the future at 30,000 feet with a lot of blueprints talking about realities that we don't see, we don't know. We say, man, I just, I mean, can we talk about me for a second? Apostle, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, what's up now? And the church is established on the foundation of the apostles' perspective, insight, in the future, 30,000 feet, we're going to take, we're going to good news everything and everyone, right? We're going to, like, how, like, usually the question is, you know, pastors are like, how do we make sure that every person is loved, okay? And apostles are like, how do we take over everything? <laughs> yeah, evangelists like, how, how, do, how, do we get, how do we get people saved? And apostles like, do you think Microsoft is for sale? <laughs> you have apostles, the blueprints, big thinking, big dreaming, big, yay, you know, yeah. And then you have prophets. What are they doing? They're Genesis wanting everything. The prophet looks at the scroll and gives it breath. That in the beginning, you have the Father, the Son, the Spirit, and perfect communion and perfect unity. And from that place, God begins to speak and the Spirit begins to take off with the declaration of God because God doesn't do anything unless it's first spoken because the kingdom of God is voice activated. We read the blueprints and then the prophets declare and what do they say? Let there be. Guess what your journal is? It's your scroll. You get to go apostle all up on your skull. I don't know where you're at, and I do care, but where are you going, and have you been there yet? You should go there before you get there, so you know when you're there. How do you do that? You ascend above time, go into the Father, seated at the right hand of the Father, where you are, where you transcend, where you're above this time and space, go into the future, go into the Friday while it's still Monday, and begin to declare Friday into Monday. You can go into tomorrow, tonight, and begin to frame out the glory of the Lord over the day, declaring peace, creativity, the wisdom of God. Church, do not be ignorant of supernatural spiritual things. Apostles, prophets, you should go prophet on your week. What do you mean? See it, write it down, declare it, let there be, Genesis 1 it. Let there be, let there be. What does a prophet do? The prophet goes into the chaos like the spirit, into the formless and void, and he hovers in the chaos. And it's all crazy, nonsensical. It's the two who. And there in the, form, there in the, in the void, there in the chaos, the prophet speaks, let there be the government of God here in this time and space and the spirit of God manifests what we declare. Apostles, prophets. And then he says, are all apostles? Uh, uh, let, 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 let's do one. Teachers, we need teachers. What, when you gotta have good theology. Why, what's bad theology? You believe something about God that isn't true. If you did that about me, that'd bum me out. But imagine being God. There's all these narratives about who God is that simply aren't true. That's when we need a generation that's walking in spirit and in truth. So we can actually model the kingdom. We need good theology, good teachers. And we need miracles. Declare miracles. Miracles should be a normal part of the kingdom. And gifts of healing. And helping and administrating. Guess what? Mary Seely was out in the parking lot for the very first time tonight. She's part of our, our new A team group. We got, we got a new team today, people serving across the fabric of the church, okay? Their very first time serving at SRC. You say, you got miracles and prophecies. And guess what else Paul says? And the ministry of helps. The supernatural ministry of helps and administration. At SRC, I don't want you prophesying over me unless you've first been in the parking lot. Why? Because my Bible says if you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be a servant. It's a test. 
that the disciples were first servants of Christ before they became friends of Christ. He said, I no longer call you servants. I now call you. I don't want to go to war with you unless I know I can trust you. How do I know I can trust you? Do you have the heart of greatness, the servant heart of Christ? One that's willing to get on your knees and wash the feet of your, of your disciples. If you're like Jesus, I want to be your friend. If you're not like Jesus, I want to lead you to the Lord so you can become like, but I already know the Lord. Yeah, but let's get born again again. <laughs> yes. And then he says, helping, administration, various kinds of tongues are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but earnestly desire spiritual, supernatural gifts. I like um, the Passion Translation. It says, but you should all constantly boil over with passion and seeking higher level gifts. Yeah, yeah sometimes we think, oh, we, I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't seek supernatural things. I should just seek, you know, seek Jesus. But I shouldn't seek the things of Jesus, just Jesus himself. It's bad to seek spiritual gifts. No, that's religious thinking. The Bible says, <laughs> boil with passion and eager expectation for spiritual supernatural gifts. Because I don't want to dress up like Batman and go fighting injustice if I don't know what's in my utility belt. Here's the thing. The spiritual gifts, they equip us for works of ministry. And who does that? Fivefold ministry. The apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. They have been given to the church by Christ to do what? To stock up your utility belt. That's why they're there. That's why there's prophets in the church. That's why there's evangelists in the church. To get you ready. Because the glory of God manifesting inside of you exists for the glory of God and for the common good. Now, in our home, okay, Andrea and I went out to eat, uh, and, um, and, and Abigail, she helps babysit, and we went out and had some good pizza, had a good time, and came back. The kids, they looked scared. They, something had gone wrong, and all of a sudden, you know, mom, dad, you come upstairs, and all of a sudden we realized that like 80, 100 gallons of black ink, I don't even know where, like, 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 a, like a five or gallon bucket, I, I, like, like there was the biggest black ink, solid black, gooey, oil spell ink, in Peter's bedroom. I'm not going to tell you who did it, but there's another one. <laughs> and they're like, Dad, we're so sorry. We're so sorry. And can I tell you something? Oh, my gosh. We're talking like four cleaning sessions, multiple, multiple hours, four bottles of WD-40, because I got YouTube, Okay. You know, when the stuff hits the fan, go to YouTube, okay? Four <laughs> bottles of WD-40 on this, boiling hot water, and we're like doing what they call blotting it. <laughs> For hours. For hours. The other day, Andrew would come in the room, and, and, I've, and, and now the stain's out, but now the room reeks of like a motor shop. And I'm in there with a shampooer, and I'm working the same spot over and over and over for hours. Can I tell you what happened? At one point in time, she came in, and she's like, wow, it's getting better. About an hour later, she came in, and she's like, wow, it's a lot better. Do you know why? Because my efforts were proving fruitful. Sometimes when it feels like something's taken a long time, you wonder, man, what's the point? If I was honest with you, I'd tell you, the very first time I saw that black stain, I thought, that, that carpet's done. We're going to have to cut that out. We're going to have to. But I knew that Andrea was willing that no carpet would perish. <laughs> She's like, that carpet's not going to hell. That carpet can be saved. And Darren, you're going to save it. I was, actually, I was actually surprised 
at the longer we worked the carpet, the better it got. And I wonder if sometimes as believers, we apply our efforts on the earth in these areas where sin has brought about great fracturing and great pollution, areas within the culture, areas within the church, areas within our family, where there's just a big black stain and thinking, I don't even know if that's redeemable. I don't even know if that's savable. And, 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 and you know what? I was, I was, so, I was actually blessed by this, that, that my effort continued to change the matter to the point where that stain came out and the smell left as well. Your work, it matters. Your effort, it matters. And when you see things that bother you, yeah, sometimes religion says, that's unsavable. That's unredeemable. That just, just, just give that to the Lord. There's nothing you can do about it. But man, I felt like, I felt like that was just such a, pre- like, oh my goodness. Working something for hours can actually transform it. And sometimes I wonder how quickly we give up on people. How quickly we give up on places. How easy it'd be to give up on Seattle. I know five families, you know, and I'm not judging them. Yeah, if I wasn't called here, I'd be out of here too, okay? <laughs> I know five families that are moving right now or have already moved out of Seattle and going to like Arizona or Texas. Why? <laughs> I don't think I have to explain that. <laughs> All I know is we need some oil. We're going to need some oil. And we're going to need some time. And we're going to need some passion. And we're going to need some diligence. And we better, we're going to need, we're going to need help. How many want help? Jesus said, go into all the world, good news everything, good news it, good news it, good news it, until it begins to transform and change. But don't do anything until the helper comes. This is what he says. This is in um, John 15, 26. I will send you the helper from the Father. He is the spirit of truth who comes from the Father. And when he comes, he'll reveal me. I don't know about you, but in 2021, Darren needs some help. I need some help. In 2021, Seattle needs some help. SRC needs some help. We're going to need the helper. And he's here. Helper is Holy Spirit. And he's willing to do something. Richard, will you come and and, and lead us into just some some stuff? I, I was saying, when I first came up here, about 1 Timothy chapter 1, 6, and 7. I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you by the laying on of hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and self-control. So we're actually going to lay hands on people tonight. And we're going to stir up the gift of God inside of you. How many of you, you, you came here with expectation tonight? I know you, I never go to a good restaurant unless I'm hungry. Because I ain't about to spend a bunch of money just to eat, because that's what you do. Now, when I go, I want to taste. I want to see. I, how do you, you came here tonight, and you didn't just come for a message. You came for an upgrade. Wave at me. You didn't just come for, for three points and a, and a shabba dabba do. You came here for a fresh touch from Jesus. How many of you know It's not a fluke. God has called you, saved you, ordained you, anointed you for such a time as this. How many of you have felt the battle? How many of you felt the resistance? How many of you, you wake up and you're just like, is this even real? How many of you, you wake up, you wonder, man, am I even, man, am I even called? It was like just this morning, I I, I had to to shake myself. It was like, Darren, no, 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 it's Sunday morning. Be sober-minded. Be vigilant. Because the enemy, he's like a lion. So I'm not just going to SRC. I'm going into a war zone. There's lives at stake. There's marriages at stake. There's family at stake. I remember just driving to, to SRC this morning, just being like, come on, Darren. Come on, Darren. It's time to engage. It's on. It's on. It's on. Get, get in it. Get in it. Get in it. Why? 
because there's, there's, there's things at stake. So if, 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 you, if, the, if you came here and there's an expectation in your heart, you need the helper. You need hands laid on. It's not about Darren. It's not about Pastor Gail or Pat. It's not about a person. It's about the principle. It's about the doctrine. It's about the, the impartation. It's about the agreements. It's about me coming into agreement with you and saying, yeah, yeah. So let's stand together. And we're gonna, lay, we're gonna, we're gonna anoint you with oil. We're gonna get, it's gonna get oily. <laughs> we're gonna be prophesying. Can our ministry team come? Can our pastors and our elders come? For everybody watching online right now, I speak to the spirit of hope deferred that's trying to rob you of your identity and your destiny. And I declare right now, He created you for such a time as this, that you are important. You are a gift to the earth. The enemy has lied to you. He's stolen from you. But I declare every good and perfect gift that comes from the Father of lights is coming to you tonight to restore what the enemy has tried to steal from you. And I declare you are stepping into a season of redemption and restoration in Jesus' name. I declare faith. I declare joy unspeakable and full of glory. I declare an invasion of the Holy Spirit to come right now in Jesus' name. Even all through this place, Michael, Gabriel, angels of God, we thank you that you are here. You are here with heavenly assignments. We thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit that is here in this room, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to engage by faith, to come into agreement. If you would like prayer tonight, just want to invite you just to come. Just to come right now. Thank you, Lord. 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 Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Pretend like it's Black Friday and we're at Kmart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just begin to pray in the language of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for signs, wonders, miracles, signs, wonders, miracles. God, show up and show off tonight, Lord. I declare hope tonight. Hope for the hopeless, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank He who the Son sets free is free indeed. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. I declare a fresh anointing over you, Pastor Frank, to walk in signs, wonders, miracles, and deliverance. I see a fresh faith, a fresh confidence coming on you. I see you laying hands on people and just chains radically breaking off. I know you understand the process. You value the process. And I bless that in you, Pastor Frank. But I see the Lord coming and bringing you an axe. And, and he's pointing in your right hand. It's a battle axe. But you'll use that axe to break chains. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that he overcame the enemy with the blood of, their la of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives unto death. Lord, I thank you. Pastor Frank's going to be used by God to raise up an army. Thank you, Father. And I pray for boldness, 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 boldness. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing, fresh anointing. Dreams, 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 visions. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Insight, discernment, 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 discernment. Hesha kasa kisi ya shoto koshiki. Hosha kasi tiki ya shoto koshiki. Hosha kasi tiki ya sata kasha. Hesha kasa to kosha. Salvation, 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 an anointing of evangelism. 
Yeah, to herald the good news. I see the angels coming to the shepherds saying, For unto you is born this day in a city of David, a Savior. I just see the proclamation and the heralding. Whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. To make known, to make known. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fresh fire for souls, for souls, for souls, for souls. Yeah, 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 for souls. Yeah, for a harvest. I see a harvest coming, Alyssa. I see a harvest coming. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Fill the fresh God. Stir up, stir up, stir up the gift of God. 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 Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. A fresh fire. A fresh fire. Yeah, yeah. Fresh fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shaka siri yashoko saika shikia. Stir up, stir up the flame, Lord. We fan the flame. We stir up the gift of God. 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 Yep, 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 yep. I release unto you, yep, a pastoral gift. Yep, 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 yep. To love the sheep, protect the sheep, teach the sheep. I see a I see a shepherd's crook. Yep, I see you shepherding. I see you shepherding. Yeah, yeah, I release what I have on my life. I release a pastoral anointing, a pastoral gift to love the sheep. Yep, yep, yep. Fire, fire on you, Ricky. Fire on you, Ricky. Fire on you, Ricky. Upgrade, 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 upgrade. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Uh, Ricky, I, I see Jesus say, Ricky, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Oh, come, come, come on, come on, come on. We fan the flame. Yeah, 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 yeah. We stir up the gifts, my Lord. Oh, we fan the flame. Come, come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Impartation. 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 More. 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 More, more, Lord, more, Lord. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. His cup overflows. His cup overflows. His cup overflows. His cup overflows. Freedom in Jesus' name. Freedom in Jesus' name. I see, I see you going up. Freedom. Yep, 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 yep. More, Lord, more, Lord. Fill, 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 fill. Carmen, come here. Yeah, 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 come here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Spread your hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The laying on of hands. We stir up the gift of God. We stir up the grace of God. We stir up the grace of God. We stir up the grace of God. Divine enablement to do what God has called you to do. Divine enablement to do what God has called you to do. Divine enablement, empowerment by God's grace. Come, Jesus. Come, Jesus. Come, Jesus. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Release it, Lord. Release, Lord. Your wisdom, your favor, wisdom, favor, wisdom, favor, wisdom, favor, wisdom, favor. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. I prophesy. Let there be light. In Jesus' name, created light. The breath of God, the light of God, the perspective of God. Yep, 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 let the darkness, let the darkness go. Let the darkness go and let light come. Let light come, let light come. The truth, the truth, that we would know the truth and the truth would set us free. That through you, Carmen, would come. Not just the word of truth, but the frequency of truth, the vibration of truth. Lord, we thank you for an atmospheric change, God, that would bring freedom and perspective in Jesus' name. Upgrade, 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 upgrade. Yeah, 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 yeah. How's it going? What's your name again? We've met before, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, all right. Shaka yeah, 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 more Lord, more Lord, right now, right now, right now, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out, more Lord, more God, more God, more God, more God, more Lord, more Lord, more Lord, yeah, 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 God, yeah, God, more, 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 whoa, more. Yeah, yeah, drink deep. I, I just hear the Lord say, drink deep, drink deep, drink deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As deep calls unto deep, so your soul longs. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, God, yeah, God, yeah, God, yeah, God, yeah, God. Give her more, God. Give her more, 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 God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Liberation, 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 liberation. Thank you, Father. The message, the story, the song, a liberation and freedom. I just see like the book of Exodus and the Israelites being led out of Egypt and into the promised land. And I just see that, 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 that longing for liberation, freedom for God's people. Father, I thank you, Lord, for that, that perspective, that heart for those who are still in Egypt. Lord, I thank you, Father, for that place, Lord, that place, Lord, which she would go. She would offer, offer representation for the kingdom of God. I just hear you in the prayer closet. It's like, let my people go. Let my people go. Let my people go. Father, I thank you, Lord, for liberation, for freedom, Lord, for deliverance, for deliverance, for deliverance. Father, I thank you, Lord, for that Moses anointing, God. I thank you for that deliverance anointing, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the faith of God and the miracles of God. Hallelujah. Come here, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. How's it going? It's okay. Guacamole, extra two. Come on. I like it. Girl, God's got this. Ah, oh, Jesus. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Fresh touch, Jesus. A fresh touch right now. A fresh touch right now. Come, Jesus. fire, God. A fresh impartation of your fire, Lord. Right now, Lord. Right now, God. Right now, God. Fresh impartation. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Come, Jesus. Yep, 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 yep. Right now, Lord. Come, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You feel that? That's Jesus. He loves you so much. Pretty awesome. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the journey. Thank you for the journey. Thank you for the journey. I just see driving, and I just I just see like like um like a, like a GPS. I just see like, like like the navigation turning on, and then just the voice of the Lord giving you very clear direction and instruction. I just take a left now, take a right now, and just see that that the, that 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 the destination is going to come into sight. You're going to know where you're going. You're going to know exactly how to get there. And I just I just hear like I see you've been faithful. To be obedient to the Lord, you know, and um, uh, you've said yes to the Lord, but it's been uh, like by faith, you know, it's been like by faith and not by sight, you know. But I, I think the sight part is about to get turned on. You're gonna walk in faith and sight, and you're gonna start seeing, you know. So Lord, I just thank you for that, Lord. And your word is said to lay on of hands and just stir up the gift of God. So, Lord, I, I lay hands on my sister right now. I ask, Lord, that you would stir up the flame of God and the gift of God. Yes, Lord, to stir up the flame of God, the gift of God. I just say fire in Jesus' name. Fire in Jesus' name. Your fresh fire in Jesus' name. 
you fresh fire in Jesus' name. Fresh fire in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. More God. More God. More God. And I see, I see like, uh, I see finances coming in too. Just some sort of, I don't know if it's like a, a financial breakthrough or if it's like, I don't know what it is. But I just see like there's something that's going to happen in that place. And I just see that um, you've been faithful with little and the Lord's going to entrust you much. So Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for that, that financial blueprint that you're bringing, Lord. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. And just bless the faith of God in you. I just see, I just see, you're just one that just says yes to the Lord. <laughs> you know, you just go after it before you even know what you're doing. And I just see the Lord's really going to bless you in that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What's up? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for the Son. I thank you for this Son. Father, I thank you for this Son. I thank you for this Son. Lord, here is a Son in whom you are well pleased. Here is a Son on whom your favor rests, God. Father, I thank you for your pleasure. I thank you for your satisfaction, God. Lord, I thank you for the gifts of God. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the gifts of the Spirit, God. Father, I thank you, Lord, you're setting his feet on a firm foundation, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, Lord, that you're anchoring his heart to the rock that is not moved. In the past, it's like things used to move you. In the past, it's like the storms used to move you. It's like the ship used to go wherever the wind would blow. And it's like the Lord says, no, you know, it's, you're, you're dropping anchor in this new season. You're going to attach yourself to the rock so that no matter how hard the wind blows, you're secure unmovable, unshakable, steadfast, persevering. So Father, I thank you, Lord, for the lessons from the last season. Lord, pulling that place, yep, yep, of knowledge, yes, but also wisdom, son. I just see the gift of wisdom being added to your knowledge. It's like, say, I've, I've learned from my past, yet yeah, but God's like, no, I want you to learn from the future. And so Father, I thank you, Lord, for the place of full understanding, the operation, Lord, of the Spirit of God, and how it works with his practical choices that he's making. And Lord, I pray, God, by your grace, you'd redeem everything that the enemy has tried to steal, that even things that you think are already stolen. Father, I pray, Lord, that you'd give him your eyes to see, your perspective, God. Lord, I pray you'd take him into the future, show him Friday on Monday, so he can pull that Friday into today, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you'd reignite faith in every part of his heart where there's been hope deferred that's made the heart sick. And Lord, I thank you for the planting of dreams come true, the very tree of life. Awesome. Guys, we're going to let you go. <laughs> I'm going to give these cameramen a break. They've, they've, been, they've, they've been so amazing tonight. Thanks for tuning in tonight. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.